It's a great honor to be here, and so far as I know, a unique honor too, for according to my research, no university has ever before posthumously honored one of its dropouts <laughs> with his own eponymous library and reading room. That, that is an early type of I, I noticed it's got a, an address for a Montreal repair shop on it, so it must be an early 70s Westmont. Because he had to switch very grudgingly to electric typewriters in the 80s, I suppose. The collection looks splendid. Um, strangely, being there down the corridor just now gave me a feeling I've never had in a school before. It reminds me of home. Uh, it was entirely my mother's idea to do this. Over there. Just uh, to see whether or not, after selling our family cottage on Lake Mephromagog, we could preserve in perpetuity some part of my father's workspace there, which was his favorite. He had a filing system where he could surprisingly could find things most of the time. Yeah. But he, he filed in general zones, and he had you know a war room and an art room, and uh, you know, there were bookshelves and bedrooms that made sense. Biographies were filed roughly alphabetically. Um, and there was a biographical section in the in the, dining, in the yes. living room, yeah. And then, they, he but he'd make weird exceptions, you know. If it was a favorite writer like Evelyn Waugh, yeah. then his biography got to go with his novels and stuff like that. He knew all those little secret rules he had. So what you see here, in the end, is my father's office with my mother's touch. No heaps of unsorted papers and unanswered mail, or dust-covered, neglected exercise machines. Just the best of it. Favorite books treasured mementos and photographs, and precious research materials. 